this is uh, GCOC uh, Objective 11 and this deals with quadrilaterals. So notice how we've kind of escalated from congruence to uh, angles and sides to triangles and now finally to the quadrilaterals. A very normal progression that we've always done in geometry. In here we're basically proving facts, uh, properties, characteristics about our, our quadrilaterals and then applying and using those items to establish uh, finding lengths and angles and things like that. We look specifically at the parallelogram family. Uh, they have a lot of interrelational uh, uh, things about their diagonals, sides, angles, things like that. And so they're a nice thing to study. And then we get into the business of classifying quadrilaterals, what, what type of quadrilateral is, what property does it have, and so on. Um, I've taught this fairly similar to how I've always taught it. I've added uh, some slight changes with transformations. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But what's the big idea? Inside of a quadrilateral is a triangle, and we have properties and knowledge about triangles. So that's the connections back, and the connections forward, of course, is using that congruence to help us out. Traps and pitfalls. Um, I said none right here. I don't know. I, I, I think that, um, I guess the only thing I would say is sometimes uh, as we try to classify it, students don't dig deep enough to find out that it is a rectangle instead of just a parallelogram, that kind of thing. And then my reflections are, I want to show you something. Um, well, let me mention this. Remember way back in GCOA3 about symmetry? They specifically spoke to symmetry of these things. And I want you to think about what that means. Is if I tell you that a parallelogram has a rotational symmetry of 2. In other words, that if I rotate my parallelogram 180 degrees, if it has an order of 2, 180 degree rotation, if I have established that, can I not use that as a part of my logic in establishing that opposite sides are equal? Because if it has rotational symmetry, this will map onto this. It has to establish. Same thing with a property like this. Is it not easy for me to speak that opposite angles have to be equal because they will map onto each other because of rotational symmetry of two? Let me give you another uh, neat idea about how to establish these ideas. What happens if we start with um, a triangle? And let's label some things in our triangle. Here is a, uh, a scalene right triangle. And if I was to rotate it here about its midpoint, I would receive a new shape. And this, of course, would rotate into this spot here and here, here and here. Now notice something interesting. When I rotated a triangle about its hypotenuse, in this case, 180 degrees, I form a rectangle. Look at all that I've learned about a rectangle. That I know that these have to be 90 each. Opposite angles are equal. I know that x and dot have to equal 90 because they're complements here. So this is 90, this is 90. Opposite sides are equal. I know that um, my diagonals have to be, uh, they have to bisect each other because in a 180 degree rotation, this mapped onto this and so on. Do you see how I'm using transformational geometry to establish things about my quadrilaterals? This is the idea.